I've been going on a lot of hiking and climbing trips recently, and to keep them all as simple as possible, I've always just camped inside the car. Through trips uh, throughout the Northeast, through Appalachia, and throughout Arizona, I've noticed a few problems with that system, and to fix those, I built this insert that you could see behind me. The most obvious improvement is just the comfort. With my old setup, I was just on a sleeping pad with all of my gear right next to me, and it'd be falling on me throughout the night. But with this new setup, I have almost a twin bed of space just for myself, and I'm on top of a memory foam mattress topper. So this makes it almost as comfortable as when I'm just at home. In the past, I was very limited with how much gear I could bring. I would only ever have enough room to just bring my hiking equipment. But now with this setup, I have more than enough room to bring all of my hiking, rock climbing, and mountaineering gear. A concern I had with all the plans I could find online was that the spare tire was usually covered by the main storage box. With the plan I made up, getting to the spare tire just takes a couple minutes of getting gear out of the way, and you're right there like you would be normally. This is the power bank that I use. This is the EcoFlow River. I have it set up so it charges when I drive, and it's always been more than enough power to run my fridge, which you can see right over here. My fridge for a couple days without any charge. This fridge is the Massimo 40 liter, and it's always been more than enough room for myself, and I'm sure it would be enough room for two people. My fridge actually serves as my headrest for while I'm sleeping. So I just have this cushion that I put right in here, which brings it up to the same height as my regular mattress. And then I just go ahead and put my pillow right on top of that cushion. For my mattress, I mentioned that it was a memory foam topper. I used a three inch topper from Walmart. Super comfortable, but I usually like a harder bed. So if you wanted to have something more comfortable, you could lower the platform a couple inches and get a couple inch thicker topper. So I have a ton of storage in here. As I get the bedding out of the way, right here, the mattress is cut into two sections. You can see there's this blue pad here and the white pad. I did that so that way I can just pull this section out of the way and now you're able to see all my little storage cubbies. Now that I have all of my sheets out of the way, you can see this main chest area a lot better. I've got several cubbies you get into from the top and some more going on in the sides. This first cubby right here is my cold weather gear storage. The middle one is all of my rock climbing gear. In the back, I have a toiletry bin and a hiking knickknack bin. You can see I have these bags out on the sides. This one I just use for some extra clothing storage. And the one over there is for food. If I lift these bags out of the way for you, you can see there's an extra cubby. This is just for some tool storage. I've got a first aid kit, jumper cables, ice and snow remover. And when I come over to the other side, you can see there's the same thing. I lift this out of the way. I've got a little cooking equipment box, and then this is electronics. I've got a fan, some wires stored under there. When I come around to the back, you can see this is all of my bulky stuff. I have my backpacking bag, sleeping bag, mountaineering boots, ice axes under here. It's just a lot easier to keep all the bulky stuff together, and it's still not very hard to get to any of it. There's a few other little add-ons I did. I'm sure you saw these bug nets. If you've ever slept in a car, you'll know that when the windows are up, it gets noticeably difficult to breathe. So this just stops any bugs from getting in and gives you a little bit more privacy. Uh, these are super nice. It's just magnetic, sticks right onto the window. Couldn't be any easier. I also added these rain guards, so if it's raining at night, there's no worry about rain getting in and I can still keep the window cracked. 
And then I also added these little hooks up here, which I can just use to hang a grocery bag from. And that's my trash bag. The most annoying part of this setup is how little legroom there is in the passenger seat. So because of how big the fridge is, and this was the only spot I could really figure out to put it, because of how big the fridge is, the seat is almost all the way forward. I'm able to squeeze in there, I'm 5'9", but it's definitely not comfortable. I wouldn't want to be there for a long ride, but unfortunately I'm not sure what other way I could have organized it. If you're liking this video, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm planning on making videos a lot more often and it would really mean a lot to me. This is just a clip of me showing you moving from the driver's seat to the bed. It takes a little bit of acrobatics and flexibility, but it's not too difficult. I'd like to show off how easy it is to take my insert in and out, but first I've got to get everything out of the inside of the car, so give me a minute while I do that. Now that I have everything out, you can see just how much gear that I fit in there. And now you can get a much better view of the inside here. So I'm going to take it out by myself and I'll have a little timer going so you can see how long it takes to set it off and take it out. Taking it out is pretty easy. I start by folding up the legs of the back section, which lets me hold the table at an angle so I can bring it out. The second part is a bit easier with two people, but I'm able to make it work by myself. The box has to be brought out of the trunk because there isn't quite enough room to get it through the doors. So I'm not quite sure how long that took, but as you can see, it doesn't take too long to pull it out, and it's about the same time to set it back up. Now that I pulled it out, I can show you guys a little bit better how the whole thing works. So it's just, it's these two pieces. So there's the main chest, and then there's the back bed platform. They're attached just by this one joint, a uh, French cleat here. So all you do for that is cut a 2x4 through the middle at a 45 degree angle. You can see there. That just pops right into this slot and it's just about the strongest thing to hold it together. Makes it super simple, doesn't move around at all. It was really the perfect solution. I carpeted the whole thing just to make it more comfortable. Um, there's no splinters from it and it helps all, everything slide across it easier. Everything is just half inch plywood, makes it, it's still pretty heavy, but it helps keep the weight down. And then for the bed platform, you can see below it, I just have these three legs on it. Simple, super heat, cheap hinge. And the hinge, you can see I have these little closet door closers attached just so when it's in there I can flip these out of the way so they aren't a problem when I'm taking it out. This was the simplest solution I could think of for it and it really came out perfectly. This was the first draft and we didn't wind up having to make any changes to it. You can see back here that I had to take the back seats out to get as much room as possible. When the chest is in here it's not attached at all. The weight of the chest rests on these wires here, which are the car seat attachment points, and it also rests on this part of the carpet in front of the gas tank. The reason I didn't bother to secure it at all was 
When the fridge is here, that locks the chest completely into place. There's no way to move it at all while you're riding. The car, you don't hear any movement. It's totally solid. Um, if it wasn't that solid, there's plenty of places back here that you can attach it to. And there's also a couple pieces of hardware that the seats have that I took out that would also provide excellent attachment points. And here's me showing how fast it is to put it all right back in. As you would expect, putting it in is basically just the opposite of taking it out. Once I get the chest into the car, I have to make sure I get it in just the right spot where it's resting on the car seat attachments. After that, the only step left is to put the back section in and then flip the legs down. And there, it's already back in. Not sure what that was, maybe a couple minutes. Another helpful feature with the back is once you get the legs tucked up and out of the way, it's super easy to get this board out of your way. You just lift up the French cleat and put it on top of the box. And then you can slide it forward. And now I have full access to this trunk area, which is super helpful for if I need to get to the spare tire or like I'm doing right now, take all my gear out or take put all my gear back in. I don't want to get too detailed, but here's a quick slideshow showing my process as I built it. I started with a rough cardboard mock-up just so I could fully visualize the insert. Then I took a scan of the inside of my car just using my phone, which I was able to use in Fusion 360 to make an exact model for what I was going to build, and I was able to pull my dimensions from it as well. Once I had the model, I was able to start working. The first thing I built was the frame, and I used that to visualize how I could take the box in and out of the car, and as a base for all the other parts of it. The hardest part was the top panel, which I had to make out of one piece to make all the holes for the lids. Once the main box was done, I was able to put it in the car and use that to get the exact dimensions for the second part of the conversion. After I finished the second part, the only step I had left was to carpet it. If any of you want to build something similar, please let me know. I'll figure out a way to link to my Fusion 360 file in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a good one.